I just paid a thousand bucks for this pretty light, medium-sized box of games. And how are you? Oh God. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. I don't want to make a habit of doing this, although I have done this a few times in the past. In fact, I've done this a few times just this year. This, however, comes from my friend Abby Jams. Abby Jams is someone I lurk the Twitch streams pretty regularly. Whenever I'm editing my videos, I usually have Twitch on in the background. They have a great collection. They know their stuff. I'm pretty sure they used to work at a video game store. And looking at their Instagram, I noticed that they're starting to sell some of their games. And not just like random $5 games, these are like really good quality games. Games that are in great condition that you don't typically see at a lot of places, not even at conventions. And the more I'm looking at this list, I was like, you know, I've done this thing on my channel a couple of times where I just get a mystery box of games for a thousand bucks and whatever's in the box, I'm gonna put right on Whatnot anyway. Just about any game you see in today's video, and again, this is like a pretty small box. I've done these other videos before where I have box upon box, big old stack tall like a Dr. Seuss book. A thousand bucks for a box this big, and Abby knows video games, knows the value so I know that they're not trying to shortchange me or anything like that. There's gonna be some quality stuff in here. And if you're new to the Whatnot app, use my link in the description below because you'll get $15 off literally anything you see in this box or any of my future Whatnot streams. Best to sign up now so you're good to go and you're already prepared so when something does come up, you can take advantage of it immediately. <sighs> so with that, let's see what I just paid $1,000 for. And I just said, you know what? Just make it about 1000 bucks worth. Okay, we have what looks like a couple of small piles of NES games and a couple of small piles of Super Nintendo games. And a CIB game. I'm not a CIB collector, but always cool to see. Starts with a note. Thank you again. Hope you enjoy them. Abby, great handwriting. Well, I'll go for the CIB game first because it's the only one not wrapped up in uh, bubble wrap. I mean, there's like bubble mailer stuff all around everything, but the ones that were double sealed here. This is, th I'm actually pretty interested in this one. This here is Demon Sword. It is the sequel to Legend of Kage or Legend of Cage if you're me in the late 80s. What I like about it is it was sold at Blockbuster and they got it for $3.99 or someone got it for $3.99 anyway. Man, can you imagine finding literally any game for $3.99 now, CIB? Even like, I mean, I don't want to say silent service, but you know. Okay, it's missing the styrofoam, so I'm already getting ripped up. No, I'm just kidding. I can get, I can get more styrofoam. That's the easy part, but game in manual too and in great condition. Okay, let's get that out of the way first. Ooh. So we have what looks like NES, and then here's, yeah, so so we have two things of NES games and two things of Super Nintendo games, and that's it. I just paid $1,000 for all of this, so we're gonna see what kind of quality is in here. And again, it's not about the value. Well, of course it's about the value. It's not about, about the value. It's about helping my friend out who's just trying to sell some games and, you know, get rid of their collection and, you know, help pay some holiday bills. I get it. I hear you. I think I'll go NES, then Super Nintendo, then more NES, then more Super Nintendo. We'll see how that goes. And I see a gold cart right there. It's got to be one of the Zelda games, so we'll we'll start with that one. I also see a red Super Nintendo game, so we'll see which one that one is, too. And again, I didn't have a preference on what games or whatever, and I, mean, I knew they had some good games, but I was just like, well, whatever's, whatever's clever for you, I don't mind. I mean, it could have just been like, you know, like here's a thousand dollars to send me a random box of games and they sent me like one $1,000 game. <laughs> that would have been a funny video. You actually might see that video later in this channel. If I do, it won't be planned, but that'd be funny. Hey, trust me, if that one game was like Little Samson, I wouldn't complain. Actually, I might because all the times I passed up on Little Samson for like 200, 300 bucks back in the day. Well, anyway, I'm just going to do the shotgun approach. You can look up gameplay footage later or watch me test out all of these games on Twitch later. Whatever's good. We have Back to the Future 1 and 2. Terrible game, but happy to have it. It does have cool label art. Oh, the gold game was not Zelda. It was Micro Machines. And I love that toggle switch on the back. It literally shocks your NES to make it work. That's how they got around the CIC. An extremely fun game in Silkworm. I used to play this. I think it was at our local tire mark. Uh, two players simultaneous, one person, uh, one, one person, one person plays the Jeep, one person plays the helicopter, or on single player, you can choose which one to play as. <laughs> Finding some good games here. Adventure Island 3. What a fun game. I love, love, love this game. Starting to get a little harder to find, too, on this one. So happy to have, this is actually one game I didn't have, so happy to have this. Oh, man. This is a good one too. G.I. Joe, The Atlantis Project. Now it's funny, there are two G.I. Joe games for the NES, one from Taxon and one from Capcom. Uh, both of them are absolutely outstanding. Um, I think I prefer the one from Taxon, but the one from Capcom is absolutely amazing. And I'm pretty sure both G.I. Joe games were made by the same, they were developed by the same company, but just published by different companies. This one being Capcom. 
Super, super, super fun game. Monster in My Pocket. We have Monster in My Pocket for the NES from Konami. Again, a very good game based on an IP, Monster in My Pocket. Uh, two players simultaneous, great graphics, uh, great game. Pretty on, on the easy side, but it's a very good game. And if you're Russian and you don't know what Monster in My Pocket is, you played this on your Dindy as Batman and Flash. That's right, I have a copy of Batman and Flash for the Dindy. All right, so let's do a pack of Super Nintendo games. We'll go to that one that has the red card. I think I have an idea what that red card is. I know I paid a thousand dollars for this, but I'm actually feeling really good about it. And the beautiful thing is when I put them on whatnot, never mind what they go for on eBay, never mind what they go for at conventions, it's what they go for in my stream is what they sell for. Oh, it's a $100 game, but if it sells for 60 bucks, you got it for 60 bucks. What a great deal. And $15 off when you use my code. So, you know, a lot of ways to save some cash. I'm just trying to save you some cash, buddy. Come on. I'm, I'm placing them in a way where I can't see what they are yet, but I am going to go straight to the red cart. And okay, it was what I thought. It's Doom. Good old Doom for the Super Nintendo. Um, I wasn't a PC gamer ever. Uh, I didn't even get my first home PC. It was like some Dell, I think it was like a 486 or something like that. I don't remember. But this was basically my Doom experience. Everyone else was like, oh, Doom on the computer and all that too. Uh, this was how I played Doom. This this was my version of Doom right here. Here's Arcana. Arcana? Arcana, Arcana. It's a game I remember seeing the rental box for all the time. So this cover art is super nostalgic for me at the video store. It's from HAL Laboratories, the people who bring you uh, Kirby. So I'm actually very curious about this. I'm sure I've looked at it for a second, but I just, what? That's right, I'm doing laundry, sorry. The reality of filming in my house. It's early morning, everyone's asleep. It's the perfect time to do laundry. This was a great rental too, Alien vs. Predator. Alien vs. Predator from Activision. I know it's not about the value, I keep talking about that. However, I keep looking up prices in Alien vs. Predator. It says it goes for around 30 bucks according to price charting, so that's cool. I just, I don't know, I haven't looked up prices in forever. That's what I love about whatnot. It's just like, I don't care what it, you you do the research on the prices. I'm just trying to get rid of some games here. Sonic Blast Man, love to see it. This game reminded me kind of like a game that would have been on TurboGrafx-16, but on the Super Nintendo, if that makes sense. Must have been an early release game too, because it's missing that little front part that keeps it from be pulling it out. Oh, come on. Saturday Night Slam Masters, what a fun game this is. When you take Capcom and their fighting mechanics, but turn it into a wrestling game, you can't go wrong. I had a lot of fun with this game. It's more, it is more of a fighting game than a wrestling game, but I still had a lot of fun with it. Oh yeah, there's Mech Warrior. Mech Warrior. Gotta have lo love the robot type games here. Along with that, we have Cybernator. I do remember renting Cybernator once or twice from Konami. Very cool. The final game in this set. Oh, look how much text is on this label here. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. The, what does that say? The ultimate fighting game. The ultimate fighting game. It was completely unnecessary. It was like, it, if this came from like, an ad, like a magazine ad, then sure. But it's Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. You didn't need to add the ultimate fighting game. <laughs> well, that's that's all, it'll, that's all it'll get you. Oh, I still gotta grab the laundry. We have our other batch of NES games now. And the NES games are the ones I'm most passionate about. I do love Super Nintendo, just like I love Genesis, I love TurboGrafx-16, but it's like, for some reason, the NES games make me, these are not NES games. It's okay. I don't mind. These are more. These are act, these are more Super Nintendo games. The this side of it was NES sized perfectly, and I was just like, oh, okay, so this is more NES games. No, it's more Super Nintendo games. I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't mind at all. But since we're already opening this one, we'll go through these games. Okay, and we have, and I quote, Lufia in the Fortress of Doom. Fantastic. Well, I have Lufia too. But I don't have the first Lufia, so cool. Kind of a great RPG from Taito, of all people. Have you noticed that turn-based RPGs, sometimes they're not everyone's cup of tea, but they always have the best soundtracks. Ooh, this is a good one. Super Valus 4 from Atlas. The uh, Valus games are always a fun, just kind of like run and slash kind of game. And they had to call it Super because it's on the Super Nintendo. That was the law. You ever look at your ROM sets, like you're looking for a certain ROM or something like that, and there's like just a whole page full of every game called Super. So it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Wish there was a better way to organize it. What is this? Strike Gunner STG. Another game I'm not very familiar with. See, even I'm learning games here. It says it goes for about 40 to 45 bucks on price charting, so that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check that out. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I know this game. I love this one. Biometal, another game I rented several, uh, at least a few times. <laughs> I liked Biometal quite a bit. Was this the one that had the uh, CNC Music Factory soundtrack or whatever? Like that, who was, who was that tech, uh, techno rave group? Two Unlimited, that was their name, Two Unlimited. I've talked about this game on my channel a few times. This is Blazy. Another game from Atlas. I'm a huge fan of Blazion. Kakoma Night in Busyland. It's another game I've definitely heard of, and I remember seeing the rental box for this. I don't think I ever actually had a chance to play it much, though, so I'll, I'll get another shot here. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever looked at this game much either. Sim Ant. That's right, we had Sim Ant. Sim City, legendary. Sim Earth, eh. 
Sim Ant might be fun. Finally in this, oh, hello. We got King Arthur from Enix. This is a fun one. This one is King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. There is a King Arthur's World, which is a little more like strategy, point and clicky, uh, tower defense in a way, like how they would view that back then anyway. Uh, this one is more of a top-down overview. Um, it looks a little bit like that Lord of the Rings game for the Super Nintendo that wasn't very great. It looks a little like that, but it's way better. According to price charting, it says it goes for like 58, so you know, 55 to 60 bucks or something like that. Cool. Yeah, this is this is a fun one. They have a few, and this is not, uh, this is not Knights of the Round. That's the other one I was thinking of. No, this, this one plays completely different. The final set, am I anywhere close to that $1,000 investment? I mean, again, it's not really about that, but it's always in the back of my mind where it's like, well, I'm, they wouldn't do me wrong, right? They're my friends, so and I'm just happy to help. It's the spirit of giving, and if it means giving money to me to get some awesome games, I'm cool with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven games left. Are we gonna see an Earthbound? Are we gonna see a Chrono Trigger? Probably not, but I, I wouldn't decline. Oh, despite the LJN logo, True Lies for the Super Nintendo is actually a very, very good game, I think. Fun one. I like this one. Oh, now this one's not bad either. Brandish. Yeah, we got Brandish for the Super Nintendo. How cool. I mean, you can usually kind of tell anything that has that kind of anime-esque looking label there, you know, it's going to be at least semi-cool. I like the music to Brandish. And according to price charting, it says it goes for like about 80 bucks or something too. So that's not bad. If you ever play Brandish, it, I mean, I'll, I'll be able to talk about it in a future video, but it's interesting because it's like over it's like overhead style but then you rotate the entire screen, but it's also the animation's kind of choppy. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty neat idea. Oh my goodness. Here's Tecmo's Secret of the Stars. Turn-based style RPG from Tecmo. <laughs> this le this logo. If Tecmo was a YouTuber, they would be one of those YouTube channels that has like way too much text on their thumbnail, so much so that you can't even read the text on the thumbnail. <laughs> I just noticed something over there. Hold on, let me let me look at this. Only when I put that last game away. Now, Super Nintendo games are usually pretty generic. When it's just like you know, black label, got the text in the corner or the text across the well, whatever. Brandish, however, even has part of the label art leaking over the top. There it means nothing about anything, but just wanted to show it off. <sighs> okay, Arrow the Acrobat Two. I didn't really care for the first one, so I never played the second one. I played this though. Rock and Roll Racing on Super Nintendo, one of the best, one of the best. From Interplay, who now is uh, Blizzard, right? Blizzard owns. Rock and Roll Racing? Can we get a new updated Rock and Roll Racing with like new soundtrack and all that? I'd love that. Put some Dream Theater in there just for Metal Jesus. You know, that'd be perfect. Oh, here's a good one too. Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems. You gotta remember these Marvel games came out, all these comic book games came out before the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all that. So like for people who grew up reading comics and all that, they're like, oh yeah, you know, War of the Gems and Marvel and, you know, play as whomever and stuff like that. This was all we had. You know, there's a couple of Saturday morning cartoons-ish where you might get like an Iron Man cameo in Superman or something like that. But yeah, yeah, not really, not much. Did I save the best for last? Again, $1,000 for a box of random carts, a few NES. I wish, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. Would have liked to have a few more NES, but all these great Super Nintendo games, I'm totally cool with. Like I said, I'm not really holding on to them. You're gonna see them pop up on Whatnot sooner than later. So make sure you use my link and get that $15 off first thing you see. But did I save the best for last? No, no, I did not. <laughs> Lemmings 2, Lemmings 2. It's not terrible, it's just Lemmings. And I do like Lemmings. I actually thought about getting a Lemmings tattoo. I literally thought about getting a Lemmings tattoo like right here. So whenever I point to something in my YouTube uh, thumbnails or something like that, you'd see like the Lemmings walking up my arm. At the end of the day, I helped a friend out who was selling some of their extra games. I had fun doing this. I'll be testing these out and just, I, I need to see for myself. I need to see for myself that they work. And you'll see them on a Whatnot stream probably in about a week. If you're looking for gift ideas, I do sell my arcade scented air fresheners that smell like menthols, wood paneling, a rusty gumball machine, and spilt coke all at the same time. I also sell my homebrews on my Shopify as well, as well as other stuff. So make sure you check that out. Hey, you want some gum? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I was all empty. Wait, I can change that. Anyway, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot I ran out. Hold on, I can change that. Anyway.